Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you another decision statement, the switch decision statement. And then we're gonna talk about enumerations, and then I'm gonna show you how the IDE makes it easy to work with both the switch statement and enumerations, pretty neat. So recall our discussion of the if statement uh, a little bit earlier. In fact, I have the code from that lesson loaded up right now. And if you'll recall, we created a number of if else if statements to check to see which selection the user made typed in uh, to our console window. And so, you know, this code worked just fine for our purposes. But generally, if you've got a lot of potential values, then you can write this same logic a little more succinctly by using the switch statement instead. Now in this case we only have three options, but what if we had 10 or 20 different options? Then we can write something a little more compact using the switch statement. So what I want to do here is create a new project. File, new project. And I'm going to call it using switch and click OK. And so what I want to do is just uh, type console.write line, type in a superhero's name to see his nickname. And then we're going to retrieve that. using read line. And now what we're gonna do is create a switch statement. So I'm gonna type it out longhand the first time. Whoops. Switch, open and close parenthesis, and I'm gonna go ahead and create the curly braces. And now I'm gonna evaluate user value against a number of cases. So in the first case, let's go Batman colon so we'll do console dot right line caped crusader And I'm using a really bad error message here on this last default. I'll talk about that in a moment. And then our obligatory read line. Okay, so now let's run our application and see how it works. I'm going to type in Batman and it will return Cape Crusader. I'm going to run it again and type in Wonder Woman and it does not compute. Okay, so I'm guessing that you can probably figure out how this works. The trick is to memorize the syntax, or you can just type in switch tab tab, and it will give you a code snippet that will get you started in the right direction. Okay, I'm just gonna delete this for now though. We'll come back to that in just a moment. All right, but just to leave no stone unturned, we are evaluating the value of this variable user value. And so we see a very succinct syntax uh, that allows us to evaluate against several known possibilities, Batman, Superman, so on. Now we can run any uh, code block uh, after the semicolon and we call the break statement to break out of the switch once we have found the case that applies to our situation. So no additional evaluations are made. So let me ask you this. What do you think is the difference between the if statement and the switch statement? So frankly, in some situations, it can improve the clarity of your code, especially when there are many, many possible values that re require an evaluation. So while the if statement can handle more complex situations, it's generally a bit more verbose, 
when you need to evaluate many possible scenarios against uh, against a single value. So let me show you what I mean by that. I have another project open and I created a more complex if statement. And you can see in this case, I'm using multiple uh, ors and ands, logical ors and logical ands. So if the if you type in, I say pick a number between one and 100. If you pick 101, then it will catch it here because the compare value is either less than one or greater than 100, in which case we'll fire off console.routeline. The number you chose was um, should be out of bounds. All right, or you can find one of the correct numbers, 42 or 23, or some value greater than 90. You found one of the correct numbers, and uh, otherwise you didn't find any of the special numbers. So if we were to run this and type in the number 33, you didn't find one of the special numbers. Okay, so you can see that if statements can get fairly complex, but if you need something simple, then the switch statement might be where you uh, where you land. Okay, so that's a switch statement. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Let's talk about enumerations for just a moment. Uh, enumerations are a data type that only allow a small list of possible values. Enumerations constrain the data, forcing it to comply by being only one of several possibilities, and in so doing, make your code much more reliable. Generally, comparing magic strings like we've done in our example right here is considered a bad practice because, for example, let me run the application now and type in Batman as with a lowercase b, and it says it doesn't compute, but we, we have Batman. Well, the reason is because the user did not enter the data in the format that we expected. To counteract this, we might have to do a two upper, like we learned about earlier, and then capital Batman so that everything is kind of on equal footing but even so, what if we get to Green Lantern? Did he put a space or did they leave the space out uh, in Green Lantern? So that may not be the best approach to use magic strings. You might want, uh, you know, anything that can be um, typed in by the user uh, or hard coded within your application, generally not a good idea. So let's do this. Let's create a new project. We're going to call this using enumerations. Click OK. And what I want to do is just start off by showing you some enumerations that are available within the .NET framework. So let's say, for example, we want to set the foreground color of our console window. Now, when I do that, notice that by default, it will pop open to the, uh, the IntelliSense pops open to the console color data type. Now if I hit the dot key on my keyboard it will show me enumerations of all possible values that will fit here. So I could type in red for example. And now uh, whoops, console.writeline hello world console.readline and let's run the application and you can see that we get console window that with red text okay so this foreground color property if we were to hover over it you can see that it is of type console color it's constrained to only offer viable colors I can't just use a literal string here if I were to try and go red we'll get an error because it's not of the correct type the correct type is this data type called console color which gives us an option of red Okay, so somewhere there's an enumeration defined called console color that defines all the possible color combinations allowed in the console. Again, the benefit is to you, the developer, because it forces you to pick the correct value. You might misspell the literal string red, and you might not catch that until runtime. However, using enumerations, the error would be caught at the time of compilation. Okay, so again, our goal here is to point out that sometimes you'll be dealing with properties in the .NET Framework class library that are of some enumeration type that they've created. Be aware of that and pay attention to the IntelliSense, which will guide you as to what the correct data type is for a given um, uh, input parameter for a method 
or property or whatever the case might be. Now having said that, let me show you how enumerations are created in C-sharp so that you can better understand how this works uh, in your own applications should you choose to use them. So I'm gonna go outside of the class and create a new enum enumeration called superhero. Open, close, curly brace, and then I'm gonna start typing in the names of superheroes in for my enumeration. And then I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna go superhero my value equals superhero dot Batman. Okay, so you can see it's treated like a class or any other kind of data type. The difference is that it has predefined values that you can set. I can't set it to the literal string Batman. It will give me a compilation error if I try to, all right? So now let's do this. Let's go back and rewrite the, uh, the application that we uh, built a moment ago with the switch statement, but instead of doing a, um, uh, doing just a comparison against literal strings, let's use our enumerations instead. So we're gonna have to learn a few new things in the process. Uh, first of all, let's comment this out. In fact, let's go ahead and consolidate some of this and move some things around here. And I'm gonna go console.writeline console type in a super hero's name to see his nick name all right and then we're going to go superhero my value then i'm going to do this switch tab tab my value, enter, enter. And notice what happened. The code snippet saw that we were working with a data type of superhero, so it went out and created all the possible cases, plus a default case, to match all of the enumerations that I defined. So that's the little IDE magic that I was referring to a little bit earlier. How cool is that? So now all I have to do is just go in and define each of the cases here. So console.writeline, like we've done previously, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Save a little time. So we have Okay, but we have a little issue here, and that is that the we have to convert user value, which the user types in, that we're getting from read line, and we have to convert that somehow to this my value, which is of type superhero. So how do we do that? Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do an if, and then enum dot parse, or I'm sorry, enum dot try parse, superhero inside of an angle bracket, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Open parenthesis, and we can see that there are two overloaded versions of this. There's a string called value, an ignore case of type boolean, and then an out superhero result. Let's take the first one, the string value. That's gonna be user value. That's what is the input parameter to this method. So what are we trying to evaluate? What are we trying to parse the user value that was typed in by the user, okay? Should we ignore the case? Yes, ignore the case. Now we have another input parameter, or rather we have another, uh, we have an output parameter. We haven't talked about output parameters yet, but they work just like input parameters, except they shoot values out instead of accepting values in, okay? So we're gonna go out my value. This is the type that we are converting to. We are converting user value, which is a string, and we're outputting my value. So this if statement, we're gonna to need to wrap the if all the way around our switch statement here. 
You see how it automatically indented in? So we're gonna try to parse out the user value into my value of type superhero. And again, I'll explain these little angle brackets in the next lesson. Just use angle bracket superhero, close angle bracket, all right? So now if it can convert, then it will. If it can't, because somebody typed in something nonsensical, then we might do uh, console.writeLine does not compute. Okay. All right, so now let's save this. Run the application. And let's type in Superman. And you can see we get Man of Steel. All right. All right, so what is the benefit here? We were able to use enumerations and rely on the IDE's code snippet uh, plus its lookup of the type we're trying to switch against and it explodes out all the possibilities so now I just have to do the implementation for each of the cases. Uh, the other benefit is that I'm getting away from literal strings and I can more I can rely on the fact that whatever the user types in will match one of the uh, enumerated values and if it doesn't then we can catch it here we're not working with again magic strings as they're uh, uh, called sometimes okay so let's recap in this lesson we talked about the switch statement we looked at enumerations especially those in the dotnet framework class library that allowed us in this case to set the foreground color and there are many other that you will come across when you use the dotnet framework class library we then created our own enumeration just to kind of prove how it works to show you also how the IDE uh, makes it easy to combine the switch statement with the enumerations that you created uh, using code snippets and some automation within the IDE. And then we saw how to use enum.tryParse and I intentionally skipped over that part with the open and close angle brackets because I didn't want to talk about generics just yet. We'll talk about that in the next lesson but just know that you need to put the data type in there uh, of whatever you expect to be parsed out okay so we'll pick this back up in the next lesson we'll see you there thank you